Hello, you guys. <laughs> we are here to do a Genesis 1 introduction. Genesis has a lot going on in it and a lot of different beliefs and a lot of stuff that we're going to get into the more you want you get into these first few chapters with me. Um, so this is the video for the Genesis, just the introduction. We're not going into any of the verses like in deep detail yet. That's going to be the next video. We're going to go over Genesis 1. Um, and this is at the beginning of our series. We're going to do Genesis 1 through 5. And then we're going to go to the Adam and Eve, the first book of Adam and Eve, the second book of Adam and Eve, two different books of Enoch, which hopefully includes all three books of Enoch. <laughs> and then, um, if not, I'll find it. I'll figure it out. Um, and then we're going to go back to Genesis and read 5, 6 through 10. And then we're going to Job. You should have watched the introduction already to the Ascend With Me series. If not, I'll link that video down below. And you should watch that before you watch this so you know what's more going on. So I don't have to explain that too much. But the book that I'm reading, the Bible that I'm reading is the New International Version Study Bible. Fully Revised Edition. Which is completely expanded and updated. Over 9 million sold. Um, it's from... Zonderman and it has a lot like look how big this Bible is it's a study Bible so it's bigger than the average Bible the average Bible is like like this much like this much but anyways so that's where I'm getting this stuff from and I just want to introduce you guys to Genesis where it came from what's the history what's the words we just want to get an introduction um, you can, I'm going to put time points in the video so you can kind of get more ideas of seven points that we're going to go over. It's not going to be like this for every book and in the Bible and, and like every book that we're reading. Um, it's just Genesis has a lot to unpack um, in a short amount. Just the first five chapters, there's a lot to unpack. So that's the reason why we have to do this. If you are new here, my name is Smiley. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'm so glad you guys are here to sing with me, so welcome to our life. <laughs> First of the seven parts we're going over is the history. What is the history of Genesis? Okay, so Genesis is believed to be written by Moses, and Moses is, written, is believed to be written the first five books of the Bible, which is called the Pentateuch. Pentateuch? I'm going to put that word on the screen so you can see. And it makes the first five sections of old, the Old Testament. And it's also known as the Torah, which is the Hebrew word for law. And the Torah is what all Jews believe is true. It's from the old ways, the traditions that Jesus grew up on and stuff like that, which is Yeshua. We'll get into that another day. All right. And who is Genesis made for? Genesis is supposed to be made for God's chosen people, um, which is what most of the Bible is. I guess that's kind of obvious, but some parts of the Bible are made of like letters made to the kings back then and stuff like that. So Genesis itself is just made to teach and preach to God's chosen people. Okay, and the date of when Genesis was made. It was made between 1446 and 1406 BC, meaning 1446 years and 1450 years before Christ. So what does Genesis mean? Genesis means the beginning. Um, and Genesis speaks about the beginning of creation, but it also is the beginning of the Bible. So Genesis is a combination 
of about, I think it's four interpretations that they found. J for Jarway, Jarway or Yahweh, which is the old personal Old Testament name for God. E for Elohim, um, which is a generic name for God. D for Deuteronomy and P for Priestly. And each of those documents have claimed to have their own characteristics and theology that contradicts one another. So they try to find a common ground. So the Pentateuch, which is the first five books of the Bible, is again, all of them, all of the four I just mentioned, mixed together. So that's why it's important to use your discernment because they took some stuff out and then added, like it was just took from here and there and there and there and all four of them to get a common ground and make Genesis. But originally there was four way separate ways of how Genesis was written. So what is the Mosaic Law? So the Mosaic Law is the first of the six covenants, which is by promises and deals. A covenant is like where you give God something, God gives you something, basically like that. Um, but it's the first of the six covenants of which five concepts are common. Number one, their authority resides in God. Number two, they were all giving in a day of crisis. Number three, no covenant nullifies the previous one. So you can't just be like, oh, I'm keeping up the covenant and it doesn't, and don't keep up the other covenant. Um, number four, salvation from sin is not obtained by keeping any covenant. So you can't just say, hey, I, I kept my deal with you with this end, but I've been sinning and every other thing, but I kept my deal with you in the covenant. No, it don't work like that. Number five, um, there's significant negative events that follow the beginning of each of the Mosaic laws. So that's what the Mosaic law is. And I put that in here because I wanted to make sure y'all knew that many of the arguments used to challenge that have been cut from the Bible. So any type of argument that was used to challenge that law, that like, you know, because the Ten Commandments is part of the Mosaic Law, because um, the Mosaic Law is Moses' law that he got from God. And if you don't know, Moses started the Ten Commandments because um, he got it from God. So anything that has been used to challenge that law has been cut. One thing about Genesis is that it clearly teaches that there is one higher power that sovereigns or reigns over all that exists and that he often over time overturns In chapter 22, it establishes sacrifice as a substitution for life, which is, again, what other deities do as well. So either they can be mocking God or they can be, they can be some truth in the fact that the devil tries to act like he's light. But also, I just feel like it's just like regular tradition. I feel like people read too much into that. Like, there must be something good in it if God does it, but I'm not saying that it gets permission for other gods to do it. But that's something that I think people just need to think about a little bit more instead of just assuming every time something else is for another deity, then like remember there's a difference between the Lord God and the Lord. So we'll get into that once we get into chapter 22 and we'll figure that out more, okay? Okay, Um. so Genesis gives the first hint of God's provision for redemption from the forces and consequences of evil. And we find that in chapter three. The last thing from the from the research is that it contains the oldest statement concerning the significance of faith, which is chapter 15. Okay, and now for the third point of this video it is the theological theme and message the book of genesis is like the main introduction to the bible not only is it the first book of the bible 
but it explains how everything works. And I need you guys to really pay attention when you read the first, especially the first two chapters of Genesis, how it's set up. Because there's a lot of things. People just read it and they're just like, oh, okay, trees, oh, light, light. But you have to understand there's so many things that are not truly said in Genesis that you have to kind of pick up on that are we are left to figure out on our own. And a lot of people just read it for word for word, but they're not using their intuition and God's guidance to really know what it means and get that deeper meaning that we all need. So the book of Genesis is the foundation is foundational to understanding the rest of the Bible. It speaks about relationships, highlighting those between God and his creation, between God and humankind, and between humans. So the book of Genesis is thought to be monotheistic, which means that there is only one God and opposing the idea of polytheism, that there are many gods, atheism, that there is no God, and pantheism, that everything is divine. I would have to disagree on that. That's just a mini belief of a lot of Christians. Um, but when you do your research on other beliefs, of course, pagan beliefs as well, that the, that the Bible talks a lot about, um, and a lot of history behind those, like stuff that was around before the Bible came out in 1446 to 1406 BC, and you look at that, you can see that there's a lot of, like, history, a lot of unsaid things a lot of things that are actually true that the that the bible actually speaks about and like hidden message once you know like that research of those certain things do your own research on the anunnaki the orishas the greek gods do your own research on the egyptian gods do your own research on all of them and then you and then read genesis and then tell me something don't make sense. Like, for the biggest example I'm going to give you is, like, the Orishas, right? O-R-I-S-H-A-S. And how they're just, YouTube the Orishas, because they have, like, short videos you can watch less than 10 minutes. Um, how the Orishas uh, believe the creation of the world. And then why, no, do the Orishas to Christianity. And you could do the creation of if you want to, but while well, I'm talking about the Orishas to Christianity. So it is believed that around the time of slavery, no, it is believed that the, the Orishas, the, the study of the Orishas was hidden in the Bible because of a lot of different purposes. The purpose is really unknown. But it's believed that the study of them and like even the Anunnaki um, is they're hitting into the Bible. And I, I'm starting to believe that it's true because if you look at the Bible and you look at when they say the Lord God and they just say the Lord, it's literally, it's always not the same kind of concept. When they speak of the Lord God, it's usually of like the highest, the most high power. And it's usually something that can be less contradicted than when they're speaking of just the Lord. The Lord is more like divinity, like somebody that's like a deity. So that's why I don't really believe Genesis only speaks that God is the only God. Even in later in the Bible, it says, uh, when he, God is giving most of the Ten Commandments, he says you should have no other gods before him. So there must be other gods that exist. And of course, a lot of Christians believe other gods are demons. I don't believe every other god is a demon. Do I believe there's evil other gods? Demonic? Yes, I do. Do I believe every single other god is demonic? No, I don't. This is why we're in the Ascend with me series. If you're here to just 
study life regular, you not believe anything, just be close minded. This is not the video for the videos for you. Go ahead and skip. There's plenty of other videos out here talking about stuff like that. There's plenty of other church services preaching the regular way. This is not it. This is not what we're here for today. This is for me to tell you. I've been researching for years and for me to tell you the truth and to get closest to the truth as possible. Because that's what I've been trying to do for years now. But yes, yeah, so if you look at the difference between the context of when they're speaking about the Lord God and when they say the Lord, you realize that when they say the Lord, it's usually somebody that's like less powerful than the all high creation. Like when they see, they say the Lord was looking for Adam and Eve, but why would the highest of power have to look if, they're, if it's omnipresent, right? It's everywhere. So it's not the highest power. It's a deed. It could be an angel. It could be an Anunnaki. It could be an Arisha. We don't know. We don't know. It's getting into the scriptures to preach it out to people. But people have taken the, the scripture as such fact of just that word that they're missing certain things. This is why it's good to know the history, the history of the Egyptian gods and the Arishas and all that was around before the Bible. Okay? Are you guys following? You guys are catching up what I'm saying? So, stuff like that has been hidden because you gotta remember, way back in the day, stuff, this wasn't religion was super restricted. Like, only higher up people were able to study certain books. Definitely not women. So they made it where it was able to get around to everybody. If you would just think the version that they got around to everybody is the, don't be naive and really think the version that they, they that they released to everybody is the version that it has been around for so long. It's not. It's not. I will put the same video that I already put in the Sing With Me introduction here so you can see why you can't just believe everything word from word. It's from Mark the Messenger. Look at Ephesians 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. All right, so that's the King James. Now look what it says in the Geneva Bible. They're removing verses from the Bible, guys. This is before the King James. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the worldly governors, the princes of darkness of this world. And notice how it didn't use against again, which means the worldly governors are the princes of darkness of this world. And against spiritual wickedness, which are in the high places. So not only are we in a spiritual battle, we're also being attacked by the worldly governors, the princes of darkness. Reptilians. Many books have been removed from the Bible. The Apocrypha, the Book of Enoch, the Book of Jasper. Do your research. Okay. You can't believe everything. You see, you have to use your own discernment. And not only that, but do your research on everything that you can. Every God, everything that was around before the Bible. As much as you can. Like how things came to be and everything. And you'll see why. I'm like, okay. Genesis is clearly here. Clearly. It's subliminally here, and it's easy for me to see now, but I've been reading the Bible off and on. I grew up in church, so I've been reading the Bible. I've been knowing about Genesis and things, the Bible, for my whole life, so I never knew about it. So I used to read it just like everybody else, but we're here to ascend. Even parts of Genesis, he's like he, the highest of high creation, the Lord God, is talking to somebody. Who is he talking to? They say angels. Because he don't need to talk to himself. Talking about let there be light, let them make it in our image. Who's our? He needs to make, let's make them in my image. He said, let's make it in our. Who's our? If it's not another deity. Honey. <laughs> Of this video, we're going to go over 
quickly so I can play that line for the diamatical, the diamatic outline. So in Genesis, chapters 1 through 11 is considered the pre-medieval history, pre-medieval history. And we're just going to go over the points of that. And that's, so we have A, which is the story of creation. That's chapters, that's chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 2, verse 3. B is the, the probation and the fall of humanity, which, which is chapter 2, verse 4 through chapter 3, verse 24. C, humanity understanding death. That's chapter 4, verse 1 through chapter 6, verse 8. D, the world under judgment. That's chapter 6. Verse 9 through chapter 8, verse 14. Again, we're not going to do this for everything. Just like I said before. E, renewal and reopening. That's chapter 8, verse, 14, verse 15 through chapter 10, verse 32. And F, and then beginning Babel and Canaan, chapter 11. And then the second part of the Bible is considered to be the patriarchal history, which is when human beings are more favored by God and they become like the ruler of their nation. It's like that. And that's from chapters 12 through the end of Genesis, which is chapter 50. Um, and that is Abraham. That's A, Abraham under call and promise from chapter 12 to 20. B, Isaac and further test of faith which is chapters 21 through 26. C, Jacob and the emergence of Israel, which is chapters 27 through 36. D, Joseph and the migration to Egypt, which is chapters 37 through 50. For the fifth, point of this video is the meaning of the divine name Yahweh. This is a little bit more, this is the last one that is very, has a lot more detail, okay? So, let's just start, <laughs> let's just start. I'm just going to read it off so we can get through this, okay? Pronunciation of the Hebrew word that is Y-H-W-H is the personal and covenant, covenant, a good deal, for the name of God in the Old Testament. Jehovah is a spelling that develops from combining the consonants of the name with the vowels of the Hebrew word for Lord, which is Adonai. Adonai, whatever. The Jews who do not read YHWH as Adonai read it as Hashem, which means the name. Yahweh, which means he is, eventually ceased to be. To be pronounced because later Jews thought of it to be too holy to be spoken and feared violating Exodus chapter 20 verse 7 and Leviticus chapter 24 verse 16. To understand how Lord became to be the translation of Yahweh, we must understand the Greek word Kyrios in which one of its meaning is Lord. And the Septuagint, which is the ancient pre-Christian Greek translation of the Old Testament, um, and in the New Testament, um, it was the standard word for Lord. So that's what, kind of where Lord came from, and then translated to Yahweh. The name Yahweh is supposed to be a testimony to his faithfulness and promises, and conveys that God is ever-present, forever here, um, forever around with his people to save, help, deliver, redeem, bless, and keep covenant, keep the deal. Um, the, the abbreviated form of Yahweh is preserved in, in the Hebrew name Joshua, which is who is, Joshua's mentioned, the, that name is mentioned many times in the Bible, but it's in Genesis as well. And in the name, in the Greek name for Jesus, which both means the Lord saves. And of course, the Lord is Yahweh. So Yahweh saves. Okay, moving on. Got to finish these last two points quickly. So 
the sixth point that we're going to get on to today is the Bible account of creation. This is from Genesis 1, and there is a balance in all things. This is taught in creation between the two lights mentioned in the wall of the sky, um, slash birds, oh, meant the two lights mentioned, the wall in the sky with birds, seas and sea creatures, Um, and then the, and the land and the ter terrestrial creature. Um, so the word day, which is yom in the, in Hebrew, can mean a single day, a lifetime, an ind ind indeterminate time. Um, same with, um, evening and morning. It could also mean like a long age or like a new age, like in that age of time. So don't, that's another thing that people take very much as word for word when it just is um, not that like factual, not that literal. Now for the final seventh part is the creation in the Bible in the ancient Near East, which is found in Genesis 1, verse 1, and chapter 2, verse 3. So most ancient Near Eastern people had myths of how the world came to be. A lot of them included a god that triumphed over a beast that represented disorder and was proclaimed by the other gods to be divine king. In Genesis, um, in Genesis in Genesis says, or however you say that, account of creation, God did not have to fight for his position. He just was who he was. He is who he is. And that's why in Moses with Abraham, he said, I am that I am. Like, I am everything. By being the creator, he, that's just what it meant, right? But anyway, so that's the end of our introduction of Genesis. I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm so looking forward to speaking with you guys next time we're going over genesis 1 i will let you guys know every video what we're going to be doing next time and you can expect these videos i came up with a day i finalized a day um you can expect these videos every sunday you we will go over the next one so the next thing we're going to go over genesis 1 chapter 1 we're not going to just do one chapter for this whole series but the first chapters of genesis have a lot to unpack so that's why we're just doing one chapter at a time um starting with like the end of genesis the first part of genesis we're doing in the adam and eve we're going to be going over multiple chapters in one video but since again it has a lot to unpack in just genesis 1 and just genesis 2 i think genesis 3 those are all going to be their own separate videos for their own separate weeks so i will see you guys in the genesis 1 um the genesis one review or feedback whatever i'm gonna end up calling it the genesis one video thank you guys so much for watching this video if you guys are new here again my name is smiley we're here to learn we're here to ascend but in order for you to keep up on this beautiful journey i'm gonna need you to subscribe turn your notification bell on so you can get notified anytime we post this video again these videos are going to be coming out every sunday but just be notified because, again, I got some wonderful content that I ain't even this one, honey. And I love you guys. I'm really happy that you guys are here. If you made it to end this video, you're really trying. And just say soon, every Sunday, this video will be out. I love you guys. Bye.